那个 Thomas 来了，他介绍这个他的第二个翻译是叫 Roberto s a d i n o 哈喽，哈喽，金。Yes， 你来吗？哈喽 ，Can you hear me？ Yes， I can hear you。哈喽，哈喽 ，I can hear you。哈喽，金 ，Can you hear me？ Yes。Yeah。金 ，Can you hear me？ I can， I can。金 ，Can you hear me？ Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, if it is not mandatory, I I have changed going to the setting in the city. My organization from where I have uh, put recording still, in I don't progress. Know the problem is not coming. So, is it okay if I don't have the background or? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Fine. I think I think we could see you clear and hear you clear. It is it is fine. Okay. Okay. Fine. We have yes, we have, we have changed in our setting also. Uh, you know, from the account from where we have signed in, it is still showing. Uh, it is still showing like that. Yeah, I, I will. I we'll keep you, trying in the middle. Yeah, yeah, I sent. I sent you message. I sent you uh, a message in the chat box. Uh, I think. I think it is. Uh, uh, it is the problem of the computer. Uh, yes. So, yes. Yes. Computer yeah, only. Yeah. Yeah. But but we could see and hear you well, so it's okay. So I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm extremely sorry. And yesterday, I I think there was a com communication gap. I thought that on Saturday, what the meeting we had, and so the testing was over, and so I I I somehow yesterday I I did not join. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. We are still trying to see that this background changes, and I I hope it does. Otherwise, <laughs> just uh, just see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we still have time. Uh, you may. Uh, I will introduce you at the beginning, and uh, uh, and uh, the uh for the presentations, I will after the presentations, I will make uh make comments, and then uh. To to save time, Kowei suggested that uh, you may uh, make comments during the uh, question and answer session. Okay. So this is the uh, because we okay. have uh, five no, five no, no. presenters. Yeah. We add a uh, we add one. Uh, yeah. Yesterday. So oh. so we I have five. We yeah, we have Six. five presenters now. Oh. Uh, so there's uh, uh, Miss Zhao Jing. Uh, uh, Professor Zhao Jing from the uh, Beijing Forestry University, who are joining uh, Professor Wang Xiangrong uh, in the first presentation. Mm -hmm. So we have five presenters now, and so this uh, uh, the, there's a very limited time. So that's why we are trying to make our comments concise. So could we suggest that maybe uh, you could mm -hmm. speak about uh, your comments? During the Q and A session, there's time, uh, and uh, so not after okay. each presentation. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Not after. Yeah. Yeah, fine. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So I see our participants are coming in and uh, registering and saying hello, uh, signing up. Rattan, pride of nature, friend of mankind. With the aim to protect, cultivate, and exploit the world's bamboo and rattan resources, the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, INBAR, was established in 1997. 
INBAR is the first intergovernmental organization to host its headquarters in China and remains the only one to focus on promoting bamboo and rattan for sustainable development. INBAR's mission is to improve the well-being of producers and users of bamboo and rattan by consolidating, coordinating, and supporting strategic and adaptive research and development. Over the last two decades, INBAR has grown steadily and in April 2019 reached 45 member states. Our member states are spread across Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas. INBAR has regional offices in Cameroon, Ecuador, Ethiopia, Ghana, and India. To realize its mission, INBAR is active across different fields, such as environmental protection, poverty alleviation, and livelihood development. INBAR supports scientific and technological innovation, the cultivation and expansion of existing resources, downstream processing and utilization, and the promotion and use of a wide variety of diversified products as well as showcasing the positive contribution to the development of a green economy, poverty alleviation, and livelihood improvement. Cultural products and heritage can enhance quality of life and protect, enhance, and expand bamboo and rattan culture. INBAR is an observer to the United Nations General Assembly and has recently achieved great success during its 20th anniversary celebrations and 2018's Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress. Heads of state from China, Ethiopia, Ecuador, Colombia, Cameroon, and Madagascar, as well as heads of high-level agencies of the United Nations, expressed support for these events in different forms or congratulated INBAR for its increasing international visibility and influence. Looking towards the future, INBAR has formulated a development plan for 2015 to 2030. We will work with member states and international partners to help achieve the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and align with plans for the Belt and Road Initiative and South-South Cooperation. INBAR will forge a unique path to make a real positive difference and work together towards a more equitable and greener world. Warm greetings from UIA. I am Jose Luis Cortez, President of the International Union of Architects. For the last 73 years, the UIA alone has represented the world's architects now estimated to around 3.2 million. The UIA unites architects from more than 100 countries and territories by the strength of diversity and partnership across the five regions of the UIA. At the COP21-24, when the UIA made calls in action to halt climate change, governments, civil society, and the private sector have recognized that the built environment is a contributor to climate change. UN declared year 2021 as the Climate Action Year. We have to implement climate action for cities in terms of climate adaptation, mitigation, and response. Coupled with the pandemic situation, we are examining closely the immediate and pressing future of our built environment and human settlements. By 2030, we have to implement the Sustainable Development Goals to achieve changes in next eight years is a global challenge. In recognition of the urgency of the situation, the UIA has formed an independent commission 
on Sustainable Development Goals named UIA SDG Commission to influence architects towards sustainable, resilient, climate-friendly, and carbon-neutral design. To facilitate the challenge, we accept UN Habitat's new urban agenda as our own, and we endorse United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and we pledge to achieve carbon neutrality in our communities and buildings. The UIA acknowledges the efforts of all stakeholders of built environment to make change. Similarly, governments, civil society, researchers, and the private sector can help secure public demand for sustainable solutions and investment. To initiate new solutions, we have to explore new partnerships. For this, we look to INVAR with its expertise assisting governments, businesses, and local communities to identify new and innovative uses for bamboo and rattan as a building material across more than 50 countries in global South Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The UIA is delighted to work with INVAR to promote resilient design through sharing the design ideas of bamboo architecture. Lastly, on the occasion of the COP26, I pledge to the architects of the world to acknowledge that using the time-tested traditional technology, innovative ideas, and in the passive implementation process, there is a window of opportunity to shape our built environment and the cities in a way that reduces overall energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much. Greetings from Beijing. I'm Jing Wei, Capacity Building Manager at the headquarter of the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization. You are now attending session four of the 2021 International Online Seminar. Uh, please mute yourself. Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material. The topic of today is mechanisms for capacity building of professionals. One of Inbart's key role in the international society is promoting international exchanges and facilitate cooperation in bamboo and rattan development. While capacity building and trainings are very effective ways for promoting international exchanges and cooperation. In the past 24 years, Inbar has been making arduous efforts in providing training and capacity building services globally. Since we started the e-learning program more than a year ago, Inbar finds its online events have become a get-together place 
of global professionals who are presently researching, developing, and using bamboo and unretired resources for their or their products. It did create an opportunity for the professionals who are from different parts of the world, different fields of studies and works to join each other, exchanging knowledge, information, skills, practical experiences, as well as concepts, ideas, and initiatives. This seminar we are having is a very good exemplary platform where our task force members works with global professionals on specific issues, where new ideas and initiatives are generated. Some of our traditional participants may know this seminar is the second of its type. Last year, we had the first seminar with the same title. As a result, all participants agreed on the initiative of creating sustainable value chains for the bamboo construction sector. A valid bamboo sector requires a whole cluster of businesses with specialized personnel working on each key of the supply chain. We need engineers and architects who understand bamboo's properties. Bunches of professionals who could produce, process, standardize, design, apply, market bamboo construction materials and related products. Hence, this year, in this session, we are exploring the mechanism of cultivating such professionals. Today, we have five panelists who are going to inspire us with their brilliant ideas and best practices trialed and verified in different parts of the world. They will show us the parts for a valid mechanism for capacity building for professionals worldwide. Please join me to welcome them, Professor Wang Xiangrong and Professor Zhao Jing from the School of Landscape Architecture at Beijing Forestry University. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, and Andre and John. Uh, Andre is from uh, the Institute Technology Bandang of in Indonesia. And John is an educator at the Architecture Association Visiting School. And Marco Similo, a faculty lead of Y Project. Hello. Please. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Please also welcome my co-moderator, Ms. Uh, Nilam Manjunas, CEO and founder of the Center for Hello. Green Building Materials and Hello. Technology, Bangalore, India. Welcome, Nilam. She will be moderating the panelist discussion and the Q&A session. Now let me introduce our first two panelists, Prof. Wang Xiangrong, leading professor and dean of the School of Landscape Architecture at the Beijing Forestry University, principal of Atelier DYJG, vice president of Chinese Society of Landscape Architecture, chief editor of Chinese Landscape Architecture, BLA from Tongji University, Shanghai in 1983, MLA from Beijing Forestry University in 1986. Doctor and engineer from the School of Urban and Landscape Planning at Kassel University, Germany in 1995. Three times of honor award from ASLA, three times of award from British Landscape Institute, 10 times of National Landscape Award of British Association of Landscape Industries four times of excellence award of Chinese Society of Landscape Architecture. Prof Zhao Jing, she is a PhD and associate professor in the Landscape Architecture School of Beijing Forestry University. She studies the history and theory of landscape architecture with a focus on the history of Western gardens and their exchange influence with Chinese gardens planning and design of landscape architecture and the work of digital technology and intelligence garden. 
She is also the associate editor of the Landscape Architecture Journal and the associate director of Chinese Landscape Architecture Philosophy Research Center. Dr. Zhao Jing is also the recipient of numerous professional awards, including the Honor Award of Analysis and Planning of the ASLA and the Outstanding Award of Analysis and Planning of uh, IFLA, April. She, she teaches uh, uh, Asia and Pacific region, IFLA. Asia and Pacific region, sorry. She teaches courses in history of Western garden and studios. She has also published widely in academic journals and produced research papers for professional audiences. Now, let me, uh, let me invite Professor Wang and Professor Zhao. The floor is yeah. yours now. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, hello, and welcome to the same online seminar. So, Ting and I will together give the book of our speaker from the, the School of Architecture, Beijing Forestry. The topic is competition driven of a bamboo contemporary education experience from the first to the fourth BFU International. In the 1990s, scientific diamond festivals have caught on well in many countries around the world. Who are mounting the landscape art and around people's lives? Wang Lao, 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 yeah. Hello. Now it's better. Now it's better. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so, sorry, yeah. Okay, yeah. I will try it again, yeah. Okay, so it's good right now? Yeah. So, since 1990s, can you hear me? Since 1990s. It's much better now. It's much better. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Since 1990s, artistic, uh, garden festival have caught on well in many countries around the world. Such festivals are aimed at advancing the landscape art and arouse people's love. They are usually held on a regular basis in a fixed place and are open to the public. I personally participated in the 2011 Shomong to Lubang International Garden Festival in France and uh, also 2012 Singapore Garden Festival. Yes. China has a long history of garden exhibitions with a flower show starting thousands of years ago during the Tang Dynasty. But an international garden festival like the one in Chambon in France is not, not, has not been held yet in China. Beijing Forestry University School of Landscape Architecture one of the first universities in China to provide landscape architectural education has cultivated a largest number of scholars and the designers of landscape architecture in China. So we mention the future organization of an international garden festival with Chinese characteristics in China. And uh, we expect to see the Chinese Garden Festival take place as an event that can promote the spirit of innovation and highlight the charm of gardens. And that the gardens can show the unique poetry and the understanding and the perception of the nature in Chinese culture. The registration of design team is open to university around the world, allowing the students to participate widely and uh, inspire their creativity. The gardens are also open to the public to spread the knowledge of gardening to the general public. 
And the materials we choose for the construction of gardens are bamboo and the flowers, both of which have reusable value. In China, bamboo is not only a quite com common building materials in the southern Chinese countryside, but also a favorite material for painters to depict with a strong Oriental, or, or, uh, Oriental with a strong Oriental cultural identity. We hope the construction of gardens must be complete by the participating teams. Students spend most of their time in the classroom and really have the opportunity to conduct a building on their own. So by building, they can also sharpen their hand-on ability and carry on the spirit of craftsmanship to give them a better understanding of bamboo processing, construction methods, and the building technique and arouse their creative ability. The selection and the arrangement of flowers can also let students know better of horticultural knowledge and uh, planting design. Yeah, the first uh, garden festival was held in the fall of 2018 on the campuses of our Beijing Forestry University. The theme is bamboo pavilion and uh, garden. Due to the limited area of the campus, the small amount of funds and the limited time students spend putting up gardens, each garden was small in size, only 16 square meters. That is uh, four meters by four meters square. Later, we found this size of such gardens was quite well and uh, despite its small size, it could fully show the designers' team's understanding and vision of gardens, and their cost was fairly low. They were complete with four days. Within four days, in the later garden festival, the gardens are all 16 square meters in size. Yes. The first garden festival lasted 15 days by uh, a half month, yeah? But uh, it took 10 months from its prepar uh, preparation to the opening and the closing, including collection and selection of project designs, construction drawings of selected works, processing of main materials, site construction, award discussion and the determination, exhibition, and other stages. A total of 15 gardens were built for the first garden festival. Eight universities from home and abroad were invited to build one garden each. For the other seven gardens, we invited all students of architecture and the landscape from home and abroad. It provided their designs and uh, Finally, received 203 in pairs from 112 universities around the world. After several rounds of selection, the works from seven participating teams were selected, and such teams participated in the on site construction together with eight other invited teams. They were required to complete their design gardens in three and a half days. During the construction, the students were able to be fully familiar with the material performance and the construction methods. Besides, they also, they also had to, in addition to given overall consideration to the cost, duration, duration and manpower find out and uh, solve problems and uh, start off in the design stage. And uh, for the first garden making festival, our school built up an information pavilion called the, the Pavilion of Clouds in the center of the festival site, where the opening ceremony and some performance activities were held. Such a pavilion, about 120 
square meters in size was also made of bamboo and designed by Song Ye Hao, a professor at School of Architecture, Tsinghua University. Subsequent to the end of the exhibition, all 15 gardens were moved to the nursery of the university, but the pavilion, of course, was preserved and uh, became a permanent uh, landscape of the campus. Just uh, before the opening of the garden festival, 15 experts and the scholars from the United States, Korea, Japan, Belgium, Germany, China, and other countries who, uh, were invited to the jury of the construction festival and announced as an award as the opening ceremony after evaluation. And uh, the opening of the garden festival was followed by a series of activities to popularize uh, scientific knowledge, including parent-child garden tour, photo contacts, photo contest, and uh, bamboo cultural experience for the public. These activities covered the whole age group from children to senior citizens and were well received by the public. They have advanced and the public in deep understanding of horticulture and gardens. The bamboo gardens are like a, a link connecting the general public with fresh natural and arousing the children's new expectation. And at the same time, a number of lectures were held. The garden festival enriched the agenda of the forums well advertising and enhanced the impact with the help of the international forum. The succession of the first garden making festival aroused the widespread, widespread concern of the public with several media outlets reporting live and giving high price. This garden festival is an important exploration of combining the show of Chinese garden and horticulture with students teaching practice and social services of science popularization. So in the year 2011, the second BFU International Garden Making Festival was held in the same place on the Beijing Forestry University campus with the theme, the poetic of gardens. With the experience of the first uh, festival, the second festival went more smoothly and easily in organization. The designer team had a better understanding of the characteristic of bamboo with the first uh, festival as a reference so that their work became more expressive and more excellent. After this festival ended, these gardens, all the gardens were moved to a park in a small town near Beijing, where they continue to be exhibited. So now, okay. the, third, uh, sorry. the third garden making fest was held in 2020. The outbreak of COVID-19 resulted in the close of management of campus so that such a festival couldn't be held in campus. We connected Chengdu Municipal Park City Construction and Management Bureau and finally chose to organize a garden making festival in the generous Hui Xi Park of Chengdu. Due to the relatively large area of the park and the support from such an administration, this festival was expanded in size. The number of uh, expected gardens increased from 15 to 25. At the third BFU International Garden Making Festival 2020 was live streamed the online design scheme appraisal, which was watched online by 42,000 members of the public. The entire process of the garden construction was also broadcast live over the internet with an accumulated Cumulative, uh, cumulative, sorry, total of 5.5 million international broadcasts. 
The third garden making festival in 2020 was extended from 15 days in the previous two to 30 days, and its content was enriched. During the exhibition, the festival became a tourist hotspot in Chengdu with an average of more than 6,000 visitors per day. This show continued the green education objective of previous two with multiple experiencing activities like viewing, photography, uh, science popularization, later and tea tasting. These activities conveyed knowledge related to garden aesthetics and the horticulture to the public and brought about the remarkable results. Next to the venue of the garden making festival in Guixi Park was put up a bamboo pavilion fair used to host the act, uh, activity of food and music performance. In order to enhance the visitors experience and make the festival to fully produce the, the economic benefits, the best works were moved to a number of parks in Chengdu after the festival. This year saw so our continuous cooperation with Chengdu to organize the first BFU International Garden Making Festival themed by the Garden of Future. We added a professional group on the basis of existing student group and the invited group, join many young designers. As early as one year ago, we started to prepare for the site selection. After repeated study and uh, comparison, we eventually pitched on Qinglonghu Wet Park in Chengdu and uh, conducted the site design. Since the park area and the budget were increased, the garden making festival became comparatively large with 38 gardens built. The year 2021 saw a record number of entries, twice as many as the first festival. The evolution, evolution was also on live through the internet. Representative of presented their design in a short video and the judges asked questions and scored their works. The award winning works were further improved than the in previous years in the quality of journeys and the design innovation. The on-site construction teams included 30 student teams and eight professional teams. This year, high winds and the heavy rain stalls hit the garden making festival, which causes great difficulties to each team's construction. But in the end, it was completely successful. During the festival, a number of related active Exhibitions and uh, competitions were also held to bring a new experience of living in the garden to the public. As the first and only ongoing garden making festival in China, BFU International Garden Making Festival has been successfully hosted for four years. Each year, the festival presents a great theme reflecting our understanding and discussion of gardens and the industrial development. As such, the festival leaves the BFU campus and uh, take place in Chengdu. More college students can actually build their works and more citizens can understand and experience the art of gardens. They are building more ways to spread the culture of garden and landscape. From BFU campus to Chengdu, the garden making festival has risen significantly increased the number of participants, quality of gardens, scale of construction, variety of activities, and public participation giving out a great influence. Since BFU International Garden Making Festival started, there have been more than 9,000 participants from 318 colleagues and universities around the world who have joined the competition as the number of participants increased each year, the competition has grown in size and the interest have become increasingly outstanding. Over the four years, a total of 93 gardens have been built up and many of the interests have been moved to other places and preserved 
after the festival ended. A variety of open events held with the festival attracted over 400,000 offline participants and over 700,000 online followers. The exhibited works mirror some of the trends in modern garden design and uh, function, significantly uh, in advancing garden design in the future. Of recent years, it has become a consensus to make use of green, safe, energy saving and uh, emotion reducing building materials and promote sustainable late development. China is a country with the richest bamboo resources in the world and bamboo is one of the advantages renewable and recyclable re resources. In the garden making festival, bamboo and flower materials provide an ideal pathway for green design. Such a festival and its related exhibition is a sustainable exploration and innovation for garden design with bamboo and flowers. The BFU International Garden Making Festival has received the notice and enjoyment from the general public, whether it's construction and exhibition or its post-event activities. Hundreds of media outlets have reported on it and the garden industry related media at home continuously published the award winning box during the festival, which have been read by more than 2.5 million people across the internet. Instagram, Twitter and the foreign new media have also been viewed and rebroadcast by millions. In 2020, we also published a book detailing the garden making festival and its achievements. Through the coverage by media and the publication of books, the concept of green living has been popularized to a wider community to inspire the public to widely participate in outdoor recreational activities and form a healthy lifestyle. The third BFU International Garden Festival also integrated the free market and other events like night tours to guide certain economic benefits overall. The construction of gardens was completed in four days and the various activities were guided by students, volunteers, strict control was given to budget cost and uh, it, in its construction and uh, several activities. Most of the works were moved to the appropriate parks for redisplay and uh, exhibition after the festival. Okay, this is the uh, end of the presentation. And uh, thank you, uh, thank you, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Wang and Prof Zhao. Thank you for this direct introduction to the four construction competition events. I am especially impressed by the uh, uh, special scenes that you have shown in the competition events that people uh, has been brought akin to the nature and appreciated the nature. And uh, this is, I think, is a great impact to the public and uh, uh, regarding to uh, traditionally low profile bamboo uh, bamboo material to, br to, to, br uh, to bring it uh, to a high profile events with extensive participation of research and education institutes, the public, private sectors, medias, et cetera. So um, I am also very much impressed by the wide ranges the event ha had reached. So um, it showed multiple values in education, piloting, public awareness, promoting traditional cultures and green economic generated uh, and are most effective in soliciting stakeholders from different works of the society to be committed to the bamboo construction sectoral development. A special part I like very much about the festival is uh, its, um, its touch on promoting the cultural values of bamboo, which is a feature throughout the activities. I believe it is very key in increasing the significance 
of the competition. Congratulations, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, our next two presenters, uh, uh, let's go to the next two presenters. Uh, first, let me introduce Andrew we do with Jack Noko. I don't know if my pronunciation is right, Andre. Is a, right, right. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> he is a professional architect and lecturer at the Institute of Technology, Bandung, Indonesia. Starting working with bamboo since 1999 in developing plastered bamboo construction, Andre changed his approach of promoting bamboo by designing high end building to increase its value. One of his achievements in design was, sorry, was award-winning Great Hall OBI. He gained his doctoral degree from Technical University of Aachen, Germany in 2012 with dissertation, traditional and innovative joints in bamboo construction. He is focusing on advanced applications of bamboo, such as tensegrity structure, reciprocal frame, tensile structure, as well as space structure with various design approaches. And John Naylor is a UK-based architect at Grimshaw Architects and educator at the Architecture Association Visiting School. He received his Architecture Association Diploma at the Architecture Association in 2013, winning the, Fo uh, the Foster's Prize for Sustainable Infrastructure and featured in the Dazin Top 10 Bamboo Projects 2014. He, was worked, he has worked at MAD Architects, Beijing and Singapore University of Technology and Design on complex projects in the UK, Singapore, Malaysia, China, and Haiti. In 2014, he set up the Architecture Association's Bamboo Visiting School program in Haiti, which he now co-leads as the AAITB Bamboo Lab with Dr. Andre. He is currently studying his PhD at Newcastle University researching a design approach to full calm bamboo in architectural practice and education with a continued focus on Haiti. So let's welcome Andre and John Leila. Now the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, also good evening. Yeah, my name is Andri Vidyo Jadnoko. My last name is very complicated to spell, yeah. I would like to present uh, our uh, presentation here, Developing Bamboo in Construction through Architectural Design Education. And I will share my presentation with my colleague, uh, John Naylor, in which that we both uh, conducting AA uh, ITB Bamboo Lab uh, summer course. Okay, uh, <clears throat> let me start my presentation with uh, introducing a little bit about my institute here, Institute Technology Bandung or the Bandung Institute of Technology. It is the state uh, co-educational research university located in Bandung, Indonesia. It is established in uh, 1920 and Itebe is the oldest and first technology oriented university in Indonesia. And this is the place that I, that I uh, work now. And uh yeah it was uh already it is already 23 years of experience uh since i since 1999 since i started uh, uh, learning about bamboo construction and this is the way i learned bamboo and also i uh delivered the knowledge and also the skill to to the to the student and also to the uh, professional and now I would like only to highlight about the, the hands-on workshop. And uh, basically the history of my experience in bamboo construction started in 1999 when I developed this plastered bamboo construction for low-cost housing. And I still continue the, in, this, in this topic because 
uh, we have still backlog in in bamboo construction. Sorry, in in housing in Indonesia. So this is uh, one of the uh, uh, alternative to build the house. And uh, if we take a look he here, uh, I think the first and also the very uh, important uh, workshop that I've uh, participated is the uh, workshop by Yorkstam uh, in Bali and also in Kali. And then I uh, made my first workshop in 2005 and uh, plastered bamboo construction in environmental bamboo foundation in Bali. And then I started with a new type of construction, modern bamboo construction in 2006. And after that, I continuously uh, making uh, a lot of workshop. And during 2009 until 2011, I conducted bamboo seminar in RWTH Aachen when I conducted my doctoral degree. And uh, the, the dissertation of my doctoral degree was traditional and innovative joint in bamboo construction. And it was released in 2012. And then this is uh, basically all of the, uh, after I came back to Indonesia, I conducted many workshop uh in 2014 and it continues in 2015 uh 2016 2017 and we i conducted workshop not only in indonesia but also in australia in in colombia and also in the philippines and in, this is the, the first time i met uh, john Naylor in aa myanmar visiting school and then after that we conducted uh of, a joint workshop together. And it, it is still continues until the pandemic, uh, we make this online course. So in 2020, I conducted two online course and in 2021, I conducted also another two uh, course. Okay, I will start with this, uh, my first uh, workshop with Yorkstam. I learned a lot with the master of uh, bamboo construction. And I exposed to the new type of construction, and I also learn about many things in there. And uh, also reciprocal frame. Uh, I learned from from this workshop first, and after that, in two thousand, uh, in the same time, I conducted by myself in my university with, with my students, and also invited all the professional that wants to join in our workshop. And basically, I. Uh, I teach the student what I learned from my previous workshop, uh, making a reciprocal frame and then uh, making the uh, modern bamboo construction and also this uh, bamboo hammock. And, and then uh, I was on sort to travel to Colombia for about uh, three months and I learned a lot and I still uh, participated as participant in the, in the workshop from Bali to Cali in Colombia and I learned uh, how to construct with bamboo construction. In 2000, uh, 2007, I uh, invited uh, Marcus Heinsdorf and we both conducted this uh, workshop with the student and we built uh, the model making and also we built the tree house, um, making the tree house in front of our uh, school. And then we exhibit uh, the the watch uh, the result of our student in our in in the local gallery in in Bendo, and uh, in 2010 until 2011, I conducted this uh, bamboo seminar in RWTH Aachen. This is the first time that I learned about bamboo uh, bamboo integrity, and I conducted this with my professor Martin Martin Trouts, and we make a lot of. Uh, very interesting result here. And then uh, this is also the building that I've designed by myself in this workshop and uh, the, this tensor gritty model. And in the next semester, we try to create, uh, the, to realize this one in the real scale. And uh, we make a preparation and then we bought, bought uh, bamboo there. And then in the next semester, we build in the real scale. This is the first time that I've built this uh, tensegrity, bamboo tensegrity in the real scale. And then we move from our uh, workshop into the international office. 
And after this uh, experience, uh, knowing know how how to build the race uh, tensegrity bamboo, and then I have a chance to build the new one in Potsdam, and I built it is only in three hours with uh, four uh, volunteers here. So uh, this is the tensegrity. Tensegrity basically comprises of uh, tension and compression element and the compression element was used by bamboo and then they're not touch each other. And then I also learning from reciprocal frame, I may create also a lot of uh, reciprocal uh, frame. And then this is, uh, I introduced this uh, tensegrity frame in Indonesia. And then we built, I built this uh, tensegrity spare. And then uh, with a student in 2015, I conducted also the, uh, the workshop with uh, the student and created this reciprocal gazebo and also this uh, tensegrity uh, high bar. And in 2016, uh, I, I found the new structural element with, uh, which I call as reaction. And uh, this is lies between this reciprocal frame and tensegrity. And then in the same time, we built uh, the real, real scale. You see here that we uh, use less wire com com uh, compared to the tensegrity. And then in 2016, I was invited to go to Colombia and we conducted uh, many uh, workshops there to build, uh, to, I'll, I teach them about my barcom join. Uh, and also this uh, Pentagon. And I also invited to uh, Philippines to introduce this tensegrity. And in 2017, I conducted our own tense tensegrity workshop with uh, Erfurt University from Germany and also Fuse University. And we can make this tensegrity uh, amorphous. This is, I think, one of the difficult uh, tensegrity structure that we've built. And then in the same time, in the same workshop, we create this kind of uh, reaction. And it is not only in ours, uh, it is also have been uh, made and also have been uh, built in other, other part of Indonesia, this uh, reciprocal reaction. And I'm looking forward to build this structure in the BFU Unif International Garden Making Festival in cooperation with INBAR and also Professor Zhao and Professor Wang in a previous uh, presentation. <clears throat> and I also invited to go to San Carlos to, with the Bamboo Nation and we create a lot of things. And we also make a workshop with me and Polytechnic in, in the Singapore. And uh, not only that, we built also using this uh, uh, learning from traditional, we create a very simple structure with the student for humanitarian uh, project in which that we build uh, a kind of tensegrity uh, to for a uh, refugee for, from communal shelter. Not only in ITB, it's also in Palu, we create this uh, structure, very big structure there because it is needed. And then uh, this is the first time we, I and John uh, together, maybe uh, John will, will, will present it more in detail in the later presentation. Uh, I would like to, yeah, I also invited to London South Bank University in the UK to make this uh, tensegrity uh, gazebo. And also in, in Indonesia, using uh, the same reciprocal frame, but different kind of uh, different types of how to construct. And maybe in the end that I would like to uh, show you, this is uh, in the Vietnam, is this uh, online parametric bamboo for post disaster reconstruction in 2021. We conducted uh, online because of the pan uh, pandemic, and then one of the group is cons uh, one of them is Josie Torres from Nicaragua. He she was, uh, and then she tried to realize this kind of design into the reality. And this is the ongoing project that is uh, happen now. 
the building of this uh, Bahai Tubu to become a yoga, yoga hall in Nicaragua. I think that's it from now, from me. Uh, John Naylor will continue our presentation. Thank you very much. I give it to you, John. Please continue. Thank you, Andre. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's yeah, okay. So, um, so, yeah, so um, thank you, Andre. And um, so this this is part two of the presentation. And here um, we're going to focus on the AAITB Bamboo Lab program. So the so as well as ITB, which Andre has introduced, the second institution in the AAITB partnership is the Architectural Association in London. And it's one of the oldest schools of architecture in the UK, established in 1847. And it was set up in opposition to mainstream architectural teaching at the time. It's also where I graduated myself in 2013. And characteristic of the method of teaching is the unit system, which fosters close um, working between a small group of tutors and students to develop impactful projects through a single design brief. So the AA Visiting School is a global extension of this unit system of teaching. And from 2014 to 2017, the AA Haiti Visiting School was just one of these programs. So here, over five years, these short courses engage students to develop projects for bamboo using computational design tools and strategize the use of Haiti's bamboo resources as a catalyst for reforestation and earthquake resilient buildings. Now, after the five years in Haiti, we evaluated the courses through surveys with alumni. And here I'm just gonna focus on two areas. Firstly, before the course, a quarter of respondents considered, or only a quarter of respondents considered bamboo as a primary structural material. However, after the course, almost all considered bamboo as a primary structural material. And two thirds of respondents said that the knowledge of the material and also the design process were relevant to their practice and academia. And just the photos on the right um, are the course alumnus, um, Jupil Fasil, who through the course then went on to start his own bamboo reforestation NGO in Haiti. So in, in 2018, we held our first AAITB Bamboo Lab joint course in Bandung, Indonesia, led by myself and Andre. And I'm just gonna take a step back here just to say what the agenda is behind these courses. Why bamboo? So, you know, bamboo grows where deforestation is the worst. Bamboo grows where people are the poorest. And bamboo grows where society is the most vulnerable to natural disasters. And by 2050, the tropics will be home to half of the world's population living alongside latent bamboo resources. By 2060, we will need double the buildings that we have today. And which material are we going to use to build these? You know, concrete, you know, when, when already half of cement production is, is responsible for 8% of man-made CO2. Um, and also for every ton of cement in concrete, we need six to 10 tons of sand. And where's the sand going to come from? We're already sourcing sand faster than this can be reproduced. In richer countries, we'll just buy sand from less rich countries, which will just result in a reduction in the quality of concrete, like here in Haiti. Calcite chalky aggregates used in construction in a seismic zone. So over this coming century, we need bio-based alternatives to concrete and steel. And through architectural education, we can capacity build for the next generation to challenge mainstream practice, innovate, and specify bio-based alternatives, such as bamboo. So we are in our courses where we are only considering full column bamboo, the minimally processed raw form of bamboo, that which is defined in ISO 22156. And why? Well, bamboo is strong. It is locally available. It's an alternative forest economy to palm oil and other catalysts of deforestation. 
And it is sustainable if the bamboo is harvested at that five year point and it is stored permanently. And what could be a better store than in a structure of a permanent building? So with ISO 22156, we, we have a design code for bamboo in construction. But how can designers translate this technical information into designs that clients would want and are willing to pay for? And secondly, Europe is the only inhabited continent with no indigenous bamboo. Yet Europe colonized the, much of the world, enforced an idea of modernity and progress, which impacted the education systems and building codes of many bamboo growing regions. So how can we decolonize our models of architectural education and make them relevant to local materials? And all too often as architects, our design process look, look like this, you know, abstract white massing studies in which material is disregarded. And computational tools provide accuracy and efficiency, but all too often manufactured materials with their certainties are, are plugged in, making it difficult for materials with natural variability. So it is the case that in a lot of our current design methods and our design tools are just not tailored for bamboo. So on the AA ITB Bamboo Lab courses, we, we challenge both of these. Like we consider the material system as the fundamental step in the design. And far from restricting bamboo use, we teach design software to enfranchise bamboo to be practical and durable. And the teaching team is not just um, Andre and, and myself. We, are, we have an amazing group of individuals who've developed the course with us over, over the years. So our courses um, are spread over three weeks and the curriculum looks like this. The first week is spent learning about bamboo and learning the software through a series of exercises. The second stage is a design brief in which this knowledge is applied. So it's an iterative design process, which does not just teach skills, but challenges students to think about their projects um, and how their projects can change perceptions to bamboo. And long term, the hope is that alumni would not just innovate, but also advocate for the material. So the software we use, um, we have the three dimensional CAD software, um, Rhino 3D. Grasshopper, which is integrated within Rhino and is used to build algorithms. So this can define precise parameter control, so we can script relationships to generate geometry. And Kangaroo, which is a live physics plugin for Grasshopper, which we can use for form finding. And also Ladybug, which provides environmental analysis. And you know, we're designing for bamboo, a material which cannot be exposed to the sun and excess moisture. So here, the software in, in the video here, the software is finding the smallest roof area that would provide full protection from sun and driving rain. And you know, durability by design is, is is so it's just such an important feature um, of you know designing for bamboo. You know, as Jules Janssen writes, no chemical treatment will be good enough to solve the problems caused by incorrect design. So, following material and software exercises, we start design projects through physical model making. We then move into the software, so modeling these in the modeling in the computer what was modeled physically and identifying relationships in emerging designs that we can then script in Grasshopper. And then in small design groups, um, we have tutorials which develop the projects with the students and apply these algorithms to new sites or different material parameters. And then we use the software to test the designs against environmental factors or, or site constraints. And then the next stage when the 3D model is developed is for the students to detail their projects and take the idealized digital model and think about how this could be constructed. And then construct these details in order to feed this construction information back into their design process. So for example, here in 2018, students Alia, Chichi, Chokta and Shirin developed a module which could be used as a frame for a dwelling unit. And the group built this at one-to-one -one scale, and then they could compare this to the as-built, um, to the digital model. 
and feed these observations back into the design process as a change or an addition to their algorithms. And since 2020, we've had to move the course to an online format. Um, so this summer, we had 20 students from around the world. And we asked students to choose two sites and deploy their scripts in these sites. So bamboo species availability, cultural, environmental considerations could all be compared and incorporated. So for example here, Angeline and Joyce deployed their algorithms in London and Bandung. And you can see the, different, the effect the different species of bamboo in the sun path has on their design. Here, Mia, Luthen and Yinan designed a bamboo pavilion for the cliff tops in Portugal using European grown bamboos. Juan, Victoria, Magda and Marin did their project in Indonesia and Colombia. And in Colombia, their design took advantage of a species of chasquea um, using bundled poles, whereas in Indonesia, a single apus or aspa column um, was specified and, and detailed here. And RC Trisha Mohammed designed a market and hawker center in the Philippines and Indonesia with a hyperbolic paraboloid covering an hex hexagonal plan, and therefore this could be developed as modules. So in total, there were nine projects um, developed in, in our 2021 course. So please visit the website where all these projects are, are shown online. And um, in 2022, our course will be held online um, and also with some construction activities at the University of Pittsburgh. So um, thank you for your time. And if you'd like to take part or would like any information, um, please contact us and get in touch. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. And John. Thank you very much for the comprehensive introductions. I'm not a professional in architecture. However, I could see that you are scrutinizing and trying bamboo from various angles and aspects of engineering and architecture uh, with professionals all over the world. And you tried uh, many different bamboo species and different uh, contexts and scenes uh, in the different parts of the world. Actually, uh, I, I believe uh, in you are trying to do it, uh, to do the designing of bamboo in an all around way. And so the self-teaching and mutual teaching and joint learning of professionals are essential for the validity and sustainability of the bamboo construction sector. As, as John had put forward, how do we translate this technical guidance into compelling designs a client would choose? This is quite a complicated issue that can only be resolved through the drawing of a whole lot of engineers and architects in practices. At INBAR, we are very grateful for the excellent works you've been doing to attract and guide professionals uh, to join in the exploration of architectural solutions for bamboo construction. So thank you very much. <laughs> so uh, so uh, the, now comes our last panelist, uh, Marco Similo faculty lead of Y Project. He is an associate professor and associate dean of learning and teaching of the School of Design at Xi'an Jiao Tong Liverpool University. He was awarded his master's degree in architecture and PhD in environmental design by Sampienta University of Rome. And is also a fully registered architect at LEED Green Association and are member of International Performance uh, Simulation Association and Italian Society of Technology of Architecture. Marco, you have the floor now. Uh, thank you, Jean. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. It is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you today about uh, the Y project. So I'm um, speaking from um, 
uh, Suzhou uh, in the Greater Shanghai area, where uh, Shandong Liverpool University is located. Is my university is a uh, Sino British um, joint venture university and is the leading partner in this um, project, Y project, which is a collaborative project about the um, design and the construction of a solar house prototype, uh, which features among uh, other characteristics, uh, bamboo as one of the main um, construction materials. Together with us in the same uh, partnership, we also have uh, Zhejiang University, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign in Hainan, Zhejiang pro province, uh, Thomas Jefferson University. Uh, we have uh, here in Suzhou also the uh, Institute of Nanotech and Nanobionics. And we also have as a member uh, in Bar, which I would like to thank also for the support uh, to these uh, projects and this uh, little way in particular. Um, so this is um, developed within the uh, Solar Decathlon uh, China competition. I, um, and it's uh, very much about uh, capacity building for uh, students, but also for uh, academics, for industries, etc. Not going to <laughs> read all these uh, names, but it's just to give you um, a glance at the uh, at the team. And it's, a, it's a quite a big um, and very team with uh, uh, students, uh, again, academics and professionals from different fields. So we have, uh, uh, for example, in our university, architecture, engineering, uh, the business school, um, communication, marketing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, we also have a number of uh, professional advisors and uh, um, industry partners and sponsors. So the uh, project was developed um, and built partially with a grant from uh, uh, so I decathlon, the China Overseas Development Association in particular in China, um, partly funded by the universities and partly also sponsored by private um, industry partners. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the Solar Decathlon, it is a collegiate, uh, collegiate com competition um, which started in the US almost 20 years ago, I believe, and then was exported in uh, different regions of the world, including uh, China now, when where it's been held for the third time. The first two went uh, very well, were very successful uh, in terms of participation um, and outreach. And uh, this uh, edition was also is also linked to the um, to the Winter Olympics somehow because it's hosted in the same in one of the uh, host city, which is uh, Zhangjiakou in Hebei province. Um, it was supposed to take place uh, this October, however, because of um, also COVID prevention measures, etc., it was postponed a few months, so it will probably take place next summer, so you still have an opportunity if you are in China to, to come and visit uh, this exhibition and competition. It's called uh, Solar Decathlon um, because uh, we have a number of teams of universities, and you can see here the participants for these editions. That are, very prestigious university from Tsinghua to Berkeley from different countries um, of the world um, partnering together to experiment on solar architecture, sustainable architecture in general. It's called Solar Decathlon because um, um, buildings are built and then compete in 10 contests that have to do with a number of uh, different aspects. And it's not about, uh, it's not only about energy performance, but it's also about uh, communication, for example, uh, raising awareness uh, is about architecture, of course, it's about um, engineering, et cetera, et cetera. But communication, again, is a big part of the projects as well. And you can see here some of the, um, some of the initiatives uh, that we uh, plan and carry out together with the organizers of the competition. So, for example, this is the um, uh, roadshow uh, in uh, Suzhou with a research workshop with uh, government officials, other academics, um, um, industry leaders, et cetera, and also exhibitions open to the public, to the school, et cetera, um, to, um, again, um, raise awareness and, and promote sustainable architecture at all possible uh, levels. Uh, we also took part in a number of different events. You can see uh, here, like the conference in our um, yeah, online events like this one in, uh, in Philadelphia, for example, and uh, actually many other public presentations. 
And uh, in, in many of these um, um, occasions, on many of these occasions, students played a very active part. So you saw before in the teams, you know, we have faculty teams and students, uh, faculty sorry, supervisors and student leads in each uh, thematic team. So they play a very active role. And this is one of the um, um, best aspects of the project. So it's, it builds capacity by giving students an opportunity to have a hands-on experience on a real project to collaborate um, with professionals and industries to engage directly in uh, public uh, also um, speech and promotion of, uh, of the projects, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can see here uh, our um, uh, a rendering of our projects, and now I will also show you how we moved from this uh, design idea to uh, the construction of, uh, of um, this house. Um, it features a number of different technologies. We um, Bamboo is one of them. We have also a number of other um, interesting aspects that I will try to uh, explain briefly. Uh, today. So um, uh, the main structure is in a material called blue balm. I will show you some details shortly. And um, it makes the um, main uh, structural frame of the main structure, but also actually we use materials, um, bamboo in um, many different forms. So we have yeah, the uh, structure, the main structure frame here. We also have the furniture. Uh, inside, uh, which is also part of the energy concepts of the house. And we also have um, bamboo in forms of uh, veneer, for example. We have bamboo flooring, et cetera, et cetera. Um, architects love bamboo for many different reasons because its light is um, very strong, uh, is natural, is sustainable. It has a very uh, nice uh, also uh, look, very, very good aesthetic uh, properties. And um, uh, this is, you know, and, and, and of course has a number of um, also um, characteristics that uh, work well with the uh, philosophy of this competition, which again is about um, sustainability. So the focus is on energy. Um, we, we also wanted to uh, choose a material that allows us to lower the impact of the construction, not only in terms of operational energy, but also in terms of uh, um, embodied energy. So throughout the life cycle of the building, but also that has in general a lower impact on the atmosphere, on the environment, et cetera. So we'll not go too much into details, but um, bamboo is um, really one of the, uh, a very, <laughs> I like to echo the, the, the title of this session, the very sustainable material. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll show, and we'll show you some details here. So um, we were discussing before in, in the presentation from John, of, of, you know, the, the fact that um, uh, some of the difficulties of using bamboo is also, you know, that it has uh, um, it being a natural uh, material can um, um, be more difficult to design and to detail, et cetera. But bam bamboo can also sometimes be engineered. And this is uh, the case for us. Uh, so we are using more industrial, regular, and homogeneous uh, structural component. This in particular is called uh, Glubam, is a technology patented by one of our partners at Zhejiang University. And you can see here a detail of the section of the column. Uh, so the engineered bamboo, or laminated bamboo is when um, this, um, the materials, so strips of um, the bamboo combs are pressed and uh, glued together. You can see here different layers in which like the, the uh, inner layer is uh, made up of uh, younger and smaller uh, plants and the uh, outer layer is instead built with uh, stronger, thicker, older plants and also uh, more expensive material. <laughs> Um, you see here, uh, yeah, the, the main, um, this is the column, you can see the, the also part of the, of the beam, which instead is uh, solid, it's not hollow like the column. And um, yeah, you, just to show you some of the stages of the construction from the um, foundation, where you can already see the Y uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that, that gives the name to, to our project and some of the details of the structural connections. and. Uh, the other, um, like the 
outer structure, the other uh, double skin that surrounds and wraps our house. And I will um, explain you shortly why we have this um, particular configuration in this case. Um, and uh, all the construction is dry construction, so it's all, it also makes the, the building more um, easier to, for example, disassemble and um, the components to be reused at the end of this uh, its uh, life cycle. Um, with yeah, you can see here some details of the connections. So it's um, else is, is quite sim simple in its technology in this. Uh, particular respect so it's also quick to assemble which is a good another good characteristic for us um, having to build this in a, in a few weeks uh, we only had three weeks to um, build the entire building uh, this is the foundation you see the waterproofing and then also we try to use uh, where possible more natural um, plant-based materials so this is simply a straw basically um, also very low impacts uh, in terms of uh, life cycle. Um, you can see some also the other insulations that we have on the on the other parts we use um, root wool because, uh, rock wool because it's uh, it was um, easy to put in place and um, uh, install in uh, our specific circumstances. Um, yeah, um, this is an overview of the of the main structure and also you can see like there's a parallel uh, seal structure that uh, supports the outer skin and that is also connected to the uh, bamboo frame. Um, to, to understand um, the, um, the, the project, I think uh, I have to uh, cover quickly the, the energy concept, which is one of the main, uh, again, is, what is one of the topics around which the whole design is centered. Uh, and the fact that we have these you know, multiple layers uh, of the building and that all this layer from the outer uh, double skin to the green component, to the structure with the insulation to the uh, integrated furniture inside. So all of them uh, sort of uh, contribute to the energy concept. So contribute to create a multi-layer um, um, super insulated uh, envelope around our building that opens up only to the south, so towards the sun to make the most of the uh, passive um, of, of the solar radiation um, in, in order basically to achieve um, passive heating, solar passive heating. Um, so the, the, we, we also pay so much attention to these uh, aspects because the climate in which we are located is um, very cold and in winter temperatures can uh, go down to up uh, up to minus 20 25 uh, degrees so is uh, these are extreme extreme conditions uh, and and that's why we try to uh, design a house which is completely armored protected for, um, on all sides except again uh, the the, the South and South, where it's um, energy instead. Uh, you can also see some of the um, modeling, some of the energy and environmental modeling that uh, we made to uh, support the design in terms of uh, of energy. Uh, and yeah, you can see here like uh, how the geometry and and the shape of the house works. Uh, again, all um, basically all. Um, transparent uh, components uh, to the south and at the center we have this solarium which is not is a completely passive uh, space so it doesn't have heating or uh, cooling obviously and um, it, it brings so these systems basically brings direct sunlight uh, uh, to all the um, rooms of the houses and again this is both to um, to provide um, natural uh, daylighting, but of course, also again, to provide um, uh, in visual contact to, to, the, um, uh, to the outdoor, but also again, to maximize passive solar heating. Um, but the, and, and then we have this um, double skin, which is um, 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 in a um, sort of plastic membrane called ETFE, which um, are inflated, uh, cushions, basically cushions. Uh, you will see some, some um, images later. And uh, this also wraps um, um, the green uh, walls and green roof. 
So at the beginning, when we started designing this building, we didn't know the exact location. So we uh, had no idea that it would be so extreme. And therefore we designed this um, living walls and roof as part of the architecture. When we found out uh, that the climate was so, so rigid, so extreme, then instead of like removing the design, we tried, we decided to make an experiment and see whether we uh, could uh, make them survive in the very cold winds and by enclosing them in this um, sort of greenhouse. Uh, but this double skin also plays another role. So it uh, preheats the air before it is um, treated by the this AHU is a handling unit. So the mechanical ventilation system and circulated to the rest of the house. So this um, is useful to collect solar energy, um, but also uh, in, in, in the absence of solar energy, including in the night, it, it activates a mechanism called uh, dynamic insulation by which the heat that the house naturally loses, loses um, dissipates to the, um, to the outdoor, being the outdoor cold and uh, um, the internal environment, is uh, basically recovered by this airflow, captured and brought back to the to the um, uh, to, to the indoor environments, and therefore saving part of the energy necessary to heat this air. Um, and yeah, you can see here some of the more detailed uh, representation of uh, how this ventilation system works, and we have a dual. A fresh air inlet. So in the summer, when we don't need passive heating, the air is um, taken directly from the outside, and in the winter, instead, is taken um, from this um, passive space, from this buffer space that we have all around uh, the house. And this, uh, yeah, the two different configuration configurations in, uh, in winter and summer. And um, so this part of this uh, ductwork is hosted in this uh, Y shape uh, that um, gives a, gives a name to, to, the, to the structure. So it's a very peculiar uh, part of, um, uh, of the architecture. Um, and yeah, you can see here like uh, the um, construction uh, happening. So at this point, we had um, because of the compressed construction time, we had multiple uh, teams, multiple crews working together at the same time. So here you can see uh, gardeners um, assembling the green facade, and you can see also um, another couple of teams working on the steel structure and on the. Um, air inflation system for these cushions, ETFE cushions, which um, because this material has to keep in, has to be kept in tension by air. And uh, you can see here this white, um, basically piping that um, brings the air. And there were carpenters working inside at the same time on the um, internal panels, furnitures, um, walls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the we have a like the the, the green wall is uh, made of like this modular uh, with, with this modular uh, system and the same on the uh, pretty much the same on the um, on the roof uh, with an automated irrigation system. Uh, we use try to select plants uh, that are more cold resistant. In particular, on the roof, we use lichens, um, which are quite good at um, in in this um, respect. And um, yeah, a, a number of different species for um, for for the green walls instead. We have probably some uh, three thousand plants in total um, around our building. And that being the ventilation system integrated in this space, plants also contribute to um, oxygenate and filter pre-filter the air before it is introduced in the house. Um, yeah, and some. Um, you know, uh, other views of this uh, frame before the membrane is uh, put in place. So you can see here that um, it's, it's quite complex, even though in the building is, is small, but you can see here the connection between the main bamboo frame and then the steel uh, structure. And then we have these other aluminum um, frames for the cushions, and then we'll have this other plastic membrane, and then we also, or ETFE membrane more correctly. And then we, uh, of course, also have the living um, walls and roofs as well. And um, all 
So we have um, building integrated photovoltaics, which is this orange uh, glass that you can see in the in this picture. So these uh, spaces uh, and these systems, other than contributing to again the energy performance, the energy efficiency of the uh, house, also generated some of the most uh, interesting spaces that we have um, in in the buildings. In fact, you, you can walk in this. Um, double uh, you know within this double facades and you can see all basically the main components of the building so in this case i, I like very much this for because you can see the, the the plants of the green wall you can see the uh, glue bump structure you can see the etfe membrane uh, the steel structure you can see the semi-transparent portable take as well um, which produces all of the energy that this uh, house needs um, and uh, yeah, again, you can see here uh, bamboo. Some of this, uh, in particular, um, is um, so you can see both the solid structure um, and different panels. And what you see here uh, around the solarium is actually veneer. So some of the panels were um, made of cheaper uh, OSB uh, boards to um, just to to um, cover the insulation, etc. But then. We uh, kept using Mamu also as a finish for the um, interior parts of this uh, of these walls. And um, yeah, so this uh, double layer also incorporates um, some photovoltaics. Uh, you can see here a simulation that basically says that we produce pretty much all the energy we need. And part of the competition is all, also consists in being able to. Um, to stay off grid for uh, 48 hours. So we also have some batteries um, that um, store energy. And in particular, we uh, chose, we selected this um, perovskite semi-transparent uh, um, uh, photovoltaic modules because are very suitable for integration in architecture. Being semi-transparent allows to, you know, still collecting uh, solar radiation as to, to, to again to contribute to the passive heating, but at the same time to um, to produce um, electric energy. Uh, you can see some of the studies here, uh, solar studies, and some of the and how we selected the parts that were left transparent to allow uh, again for um, daylight um, passive heating and um, visual connection to be uh, guaranteed to all the openings, the main openings of the of the house. Um, and uh, yeah, this is uh, also um, an experimental part of the project. So this um, materials, this um, ETFE um, is usually um, applied to a much bigger um, structure. So also like the, the shapes are pretty peculiar and it, it, it did cause some actually imperfections because these uh, triangles are very, uh, these angles are very narrow at some points. Uh, but all in all, the application was uh, successful. So this um, is in, in place now in spite of the uh, complexities of the system. And um, now moving on towards the interiors of the house, I was uh, just mentioning before that the integrated furniture, which is also in bamboo, has um, it, it, it's a design and it's thought to provide some flexibility to the house because we have to um, it, yeah, to use the building as a proper house for some days. We will have people, um, um, a couple of you know, journalists are sleeping in the, and living in the house, but also um, for uh, the rest of the competition, this uh, will be used mostly as an exhibition area or for small happenings, events, etc. But other than, than these, so the, the functional uh, like role in um, servicing the spaces and providing this flexibility, this furniture also again um, contributes to like the uh, energy concepts and um, to also host part of the um, building systems. So uh, all the north, east, and west facade are basically covered by different types of structure. In particular, we have these integrated cabinets adds another further layer basically to the building and up to the facades and increase thermal resistance or increase insulation um, at the end and also provide these technical spaces at the top and at the bottom to 
uh, accommodate uh, different types of uh, dax wiring, uh, lights, ventilation, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, I will also, yeah, I'd like to show you, you can see like the, this is still renderings from the design and different configurations that we can um, realize that we can um, uh, obtain by using this, this system for the different activities that we will need to host during the competition. So, so what you see here in the bottom right corner is an interactive wall. There's also these aspects of uh, connectivity um, and interactivity between the building and the users and the, and the different systems for communications, working, and all sort of like entertainment, etc. And uh, yeah, this is um, the, this system uh, during the construction. Um, I'm afraid I don't have a very, very final photos of the interiors, but you can see it in the, 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 well, see protection here. You can see it's you know part of the cabinets on your left, and this is the uh, frame for the the interactive wall that you uh, were looking at before. And you know also again with the systems is uh, uh, for ventilation, for example, uh, um, being. Um, um, hit by this, uh, hidden by this um, internal internal structures, and uh, yeah, here is a more um, atmospheric photo of the interiors and all the again cladding inside is also in bamboo. The doors are all in bamboo, and uh, yeah, you can see it gives a very warm um, uh, color and atmosphere to the building. Um, especially in combination with these other materials, so with the semi-transparent orange uh, photovoltaic um, uh, modules that filters and somehow color uh, the light partially, and with these um, openings that uh, let you know, the daylight um, penetrate in depth into, into the building. Um, so this is again also you know one of the other reasons why um, we we liked and selected bamboo for again for its aesthetic uh, qualities it gives a very um, warm atmosphere to the to the in, in, indoor environment and uh, you can see uh, also the building from outside is almost it was almost completed at this point um, from outside the feeling is very different it is a lot more. Um, um, an expression of its technology. You can see this, uh, you know, different semi-transparent membrane. Seen from the other side, also the photovoltaics tags are much darker than uh, seen um, through a, a, with, with uh, sunlight, you know, filtering sunlight from the outside. And you can see it's like, like the transparent parts of the facade opening to this uh, clary stories windows that we have here. We have also other different systems inside to absorb solar radiation and to uh, create thermal mass for uh, for the plants. This uh, white uh, corner here is part of a small sort of um, pond of fountain that we have, uh, which is not yet uncovered in, in, uh, in fielding water at this point, um, which was also somehow a reference to, to Sucho. And you can see here also the uh, outdoor spaces that are a continuation of the um, solarium that we have at the center of the house here. Uh, and now the house is yeah built in this part of the, you can see here the house is uh, built from uh, the other teams. So all this will be uh, part of this competition exhibition. They are all very uh, interesting e examples of uh, solar architecture. Um, there is some bamboo also used in uh, some of the other um, uh, houses as well. Um, and again, this uh, is likely to happen uh, this coming summer. So if you have an opportunity, you can also see um, tech part in this exhibition. So this is the current situation now. Again, it's very cold, so it's uh, start being covered in, uh, in snow already. Uh, for the last few weeks, it's been, uh, it's been snowing uh, in uh, Jambe, which is the um, the Injanja called the, the the place in which this is located, and if you want to uh, know more about uh, these projects or the competition in general, you can see you can visit our um, websites or looking at these articles. We have a WeChat channel, and uh, I'm also very happy to um, receive um, emails or questions or anything if you if you would like to get in touch with me. Uh, directly. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Marco. Oh, uh, it's a splendid presentation. Uh, uh, I, I like the inside of the house. And the bamboo itself gives a comfortable, warm, peaceful feeling, as well as a high-end feeling uh, automatically. You yeah. don't need to do more decorations. Bamboo itself yeah, do I, all these effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Marco had shown us the marvelous innovative ideas of integrating bamboo with a future conceptual greenhouse with mixed materials and mixed systems, functional in climate and energy effects. So there are really many attempts made uh, in this house, as I could say, it, it's, it's a, a comprehensive work. And it had strong indications on one of the key development direction of the future housing. And, and I'm proud that bamboo plays a role and, and a very important role in this. And I think it, it really featured bamboo uh, in its um, uh, special, specialized in its uh, expertise, like uh, to create a climate smart and energy efficient house. And so maybe I think, I think Marco's presentation has inspired our architects and uh, engineers uh, in this way, like uh, indicating the future development Thank you so, very much. thank you, Marco. Okay. I I believe our participants are quite inspired by all the panelists' presentations, and I could see many comments and questions uh, for our panelists. So we can't wait to have more in-depth discussion. Nilam, <laughs> let me invite my co-moderator, um, yes. Nilam. Yes. Yeah, you have the floor now. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi, am I audible? Yes. To everybody? Yes. Am I audible? Pretty, yeah. pretty good. Okay. Pretty Thanks. good. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jin. I would, um, I really thank uh, Wang and Zhou. And, and I'm Indian. If my uh, pronunciation of your name is slightly off, please excuse me for that. Um, uh, and Zhou, and I think your presentation on the Garden Making Festival was really inspiring. And I think uh, the way you have shown that in the last four years, uh, the way the uh, event has been uh, done and the way it has, the number of participation and the joint quality and the design innovations that have increased and the more and more interest has been created. I think that's really a very excellent example of how to take things uh, uh, forward. Uh, now the thing is, uh, if we, the, probably is required for the sector is skilling and skilling has to be vertically in at all levels uh, starting from the designers to the basic people who actually execute on the site so today we are actually uh, here to discuss about the mechanisms for capacity building uh, of professions professionals today and i think for landscape professionals that is a very good uh, you know way of uh, uh, you know uh, taking it forward with the students and uh, you know encourage their interest and take it forward uh, and um, Andy and John I think that was another excellent uh, presentation by both of you and uh, uh, I think that's something which you have taken it more into how to really integrate it in with the with the uh, in the curriculum probably to some extent and uh, to the AA visiting school I think that's a very excellent uh, yeah, I said initiative uh, to take it forward and uh, and Jandy's work, uh, Andy's work in the reciprocal frame, which we call as reaction, uh, reciprocal tension. That was, I think, that's really an excellent way of taking it forward. And along with John, uh, I mean, the way they are, they have made this three weeks course. I think it's a very, uh, uh, I think it will really help. Uh, and uh, uh, which is on material and software, and then we have modeling, physical designs, testing detailing and construction and how this whole process is goes on uh, for the students of architecture on also I mean for the academia that's a very good way of uh, again working uh, Marco your uh, project on solar decathlon I'm very sure must have been uh, an example to all the other uh, participants uh, who have been there the solar decathlon in China I'm very sure it must have been a, a you know an eye-opener for them uh, with this I would just quickly 
I'm an architect and um, uh, working in the sector from 1987. And I started my practice in 1991. And in my quest for, uh, you know, um, eco-friendly materials, uh, Andy, and I also uh, started working on bamboo in 1999. As you said, you started working at that time. Uh, I also started working with that. And uh, uh, there were some uh, just small insights before I hit the questions. Um, as I said, the capacity building is about skilling. A uh, few things that comes and we have to be generally start with advocacy, uh, some of the programs and the, and the uh, you know, uh, projects that have been shown that really uh, uh, advocate how to take bamboo forward. And then the next step is also about hands-on. That is one method where you can attract a lot of students and, and even other people, even common men do really uh, first the, and invite all the common men to take it forward because unless and until the common man wants to make building with bamboo, uh, we professionals cannot do about it. We might be just doing lab experiments. So that's how it will have to be taken forward. So that's another very great step. And then this third thing, I think research and data, which also I saw a lot of data very well uh, documented, which I think is, is will be a backdrop or even a backbone of taking things forward in capacity building. Uh, however, there's one thing which I thought was probably uh, must have been there, putting it in the curriculum, in the general curriculum of architecture, engineering, and landscape design. I mean, how and where it has been taken, I would uh, uh, like that to be uh, one addressed. Uh, and I would uh, push this question to all the uh, three groups of five speakers that we have, if we can have some answers on that. Yeah. Mute yourself and I would request the speakers to uh, put their videos on. John, I think we don't have other others, others have put it. Van, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. I'm uh, sorry, I quite uh, I didn't quite follow the question. I, I thought you the question is about the uh, the join the, the the students and the designers join the actually. And in this year, there are 38 teams of the professional Hello. students. Hello. Hello. It's about uh, putting bamboo in the curri curriculum, in the general curriculum of the undergrad programs or PG programs, how they are being put in the PG programs or the undergrad programs in landscape architecture. Is there some, uh, you know, some work done in that area? Uh, am I clear? Uh, 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 I think the situation of different uh, schools are totally different. In our university, it's not a course now. It depends on the students. They, uh, 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 they join the competition by themselves. They join uh, a team by themselves uh, if they want. In some universities, I, as I know, in the South part, for example, the South Agricultural University, they hold a uh, a totally competition and a post for this competition. And the, the first uh, team will be the, uh, the team we invited to our the garden making festival to uh, make it uh, in Chengdu. So it depends on the university and uh, every team uh, I think the situation is different. That's all. thank you. Maybe yeah, I, I can. Andrew, and yeah, Andrew. yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I can answer a little bit uh, about my experience. Yeah, when yeah. I came back uh, from yeah. from Germany yeah. in two thousand twelve, uh, I told uh, ITB, my my university, that I've conducted a Bebu seminar in RWTH Aachen, 
In Aachen, it was very easy to conduct a kind of seminar. It's just when you want, when there's an expert, you can just open it in the, in the semester that you want. Yeah, so basically it's a, a seminar and seminar can, can put the topic anything. Yeah, uh, in my chair, uh, it was conducted like bamboo seminar. There is also a membrane seminar. So it's much easier to conduct that. But when I came back to Indonesia and then I go back to my university, I proposed to, uh, to elective course, one in the, in the undergraduate and one in the master program. But the success is only in the, in the master program. Yeah, and then uh, up to now, we, I have a bamboo building technology in which that it's uh, uh, explicitly uh, put in the course, explicitly the name of the course, uh, elective course. But in the undergraduate program, we are put the topic of bamboo into the studio of construction, building construction and materials. So we put one or two weeks to teach the student about okay. this uh, material. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. John, would you yeah. like to uh, respond? Yeah, I, th I think um, I think we're at a a, a a really crucial moment as well because, like, uh, you know, th these these ten years were really. You see the so the younger generation who are going to university, knowing that that's the they they are the generation that's going to be affected the most by climate change. We, we see the impact of the materials we use in our built environment on a globe, um, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and I mean, speaking from, from a UK perspective, um, which is not necessarily where bamboo grows, but there's definitely a drive towards alternative materials. So I think it's, I think, especially in the next decade, you're going to have more of a desire for students and then universities to cater to the students' demands to learn about alternative materials that don't produce so, so much CO2 and don't destroy ecologies. Um, and now with ISO 22156, I think that, that we have this sort of parallel um, technical document, which you know, allows us to, to train the next generation of designers to actually design for this, for this document. Because one of the challenges has always been that you you can design with bamboo as an architect, but then when it needs to be given to an engineer or it needs to seek approvals, there hasn't really been that ability to um, sort of take that design and actually make it buildable um, yeah. or like code compliant. So I, th I think um, I think it, it needs architects and engineers to work very closely, um, and I, I, I do think it. it, it I hope. Um, that there is there is actually going to be a sort of positive organic change, and um, through students demanding it, universities are start going to start incorporating timbers and bamboos into their um, design curriculums. Okay, I simply loved your comment about this bamboo was about decolonize our material palettes and methods of construction. I think I really love that. Uh, one comment, uh, there was this, there's this one, uh, Vinu Kale is another architect that used to be in India. He unfortunately expired in 1998, who was called the Bamboo Man of India. And uh, he has written a book and he told that, you know, he was wondering why since though bamboo is available everywhere in South, Southeast Asia and this part of the world, we don't have much uh, information on that. And then suddenly he has put a comment. Oh, of course we know that because it doesn't grow in England. And I'm a bit yeah, use that precisely. colonized word and it, I think uh, it somehow uh, comes to probably from there. Uh, no problem. Yeah. And I think they should love that comment of that thing. It's very meaningful because when we talk about bamboo, we say we are trying to save the world and we are trying to build all these things in the part of the world where more housing and more disaster is happening, where bamboo actually also grows more, as you also showed in your in that graph that you have where the bamboo availability is there and more housing is required in the next year. In a few years, it is China and India where maximum amount of public construction in this part of the world uh, where it will happen. But the systems of construction and the way things are done 
they are not very conducive to that part it's more uh, fantasized it's more tantalizing kind of a use of bamboo which probably may not work uh, you know in this part of the world because the cost of construction will be extremely extremely high and that is something which is uh, uh, really uh, needs said because you 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 talked about uh, you know uh, more emphasis on the round bamboo because the more you process uh, it would becomes more expensive and it also is um, you know little whatever little energy it is is further happens like that so to the maximum of masses for which we are wanting to use bamboo and we want to train people uh, in the vertical thing from right from designers to the execution person i think that would play a very vital role uh, in the in the future uh, probably so that i think was a very nice uh, uh, respond to this uh, in your university um, uh, so this why project what was the kind of change probably in your university as to capacity building meaning again the uh, you know like integrating into the curriculum so that students are ready you know even at the ug level to use bamboo in their projects uh, Marco. Yeah, yeah. yes yes yeah. so we um we actually yes yeah. don't don't um this is is one of the way uh, by which we incorporate uh bamboo in our curriculum so we don't have obviously you know a specific uh specialized course for for bamboo so it's part of the our material and structures uh courses etc but there is uh, a growing uh, like mm. demand and a growing push um also in um, for example the academic standards we we uh, being a, a joint venture university we, we have to comply with both like british and uh, chinese standards from both sides there are increasingly uh, guidelines uh, that require us to incorporate more and more about sustainability also our professional accrediting bodies uh, for architects now require as as you know within the set of mandatory competences uh, climate um literacy and and sustainability yeah. to be to be part of the curricula and so uh we um uh, we, we have um you know specific uh, modules and courses but uh we bamboo is one of the recurring topics uh, so the white project lasted for a uh, one um one year and a half already and is going to continue for the following month and um uh, you saw before it involves more than uh, 100 students i think uh, but also we uh, regularly um host um, seminars and workshops especially workshops for students uh, to work directly uh, with bamboo so we we had for example in this case of the work project there was like the engineered version of the material but we also had for example uh, Workshop with uh, local craftsmen that uh, it taught uh, students the traditional technique for bending clips and in different uh, fashions to be to, to build um, both like furniture and small structures, etc. We had a um, um, couple of artists from uh, Taiwan as well uh, working with. Um, free form uh, bamboo shapes, etc. So. Um, yeah, there is, there is interest uh, both among students and among the um, within the faculty for for the material. So I think uh, again with this growing push for sustainability, this will continue and possibly increase in in the in the next future. So which which okay, is thanks which is thanks Mark. I think I, now yeah. yeah. No, I was just going to say when uh, when I, I um, yeah. was sorry, uh, sorry. as a student studying architecture, yeah. I'll be, we'll be... Wasn't really, yes, wasn't really in in um, okay. debated, you know, versus now, which okay. is uh, a hot topic. Okay, okay, yeah, thanks. I will take. I'll now take uh, questions one by one from the chat box. What every all the participants have put it. Uh, we have one question from uh, Mr. Juan. I think this is for uh, Wang and Zhao. Uh, it would be fantastic to have a copy of that beautiful book that you have done on the Garden Making Festival. Uh, is it available? They are asking. Mr. Juan is asking. Wang, uh, Zhao, is the book on yeah. Yeah. Garden Making Festival available? No. Yes, I would love to uh, to receive that book. Could you share the it. link? Okay. All right. Uh, could you share the link 
the chat box so that everyone can see that maybe is it possible Okay. Uh, have you put it in the chat box or something? Some link? Yeah, we can collect, Jean, you can collect and we can uh, share with, with all the people the link for the for the book. Uh, uh, the next question we have is about, uh, I think it's to Inbar actually, uh, that this online training program on bamboo is happening. Uh, will there be any practical uh, training programs uh, done? This is by uh, Zenaba from Chad. Uh, this is to Inbar, uh, Jin. Uh, practical, practical in the field. Uh, is, is that? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we carry out uh, on request this uh, this type of training, um, uh, and some are conducted under projects uh, that is uh, granted uh, by uh, by like uh, IFAD and, and FAO or uh, or some other uh, organizations. Uh, uh, in we used to conduct in I think the Philippines and Africa and Latin America. We did a lot uh, in Latin America in training. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, this yeah. this is on okay. on request. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> but I think the pandemic situation um, does not allow. I... <laughs> yes. Correct. You are. Yes, you're, you're right. You're right. Yes. I think that must have been the, uh, the. Yeah, and there's one question from Sissi telling how did the organizing committee consider the craftsmanship of construction? I don't know exactly what that means, actually. Uh, or maybe it must be a part of other session, if I'm not mistaken, because this is about capacity building and uh, uh, the way the hands on workshops are done. I think the craftsmanship of construction is I think taken care to some extent. Uh, any of the speakers would like to um, comment on this? John, would you like to comment or any of the speakers? Wang, would you? I think that question might be in relation to, to the, um, the landscape projects. I think it was the committee. Yeah, Crashman. Wang, would you like to uh, comment or respond? Uh, 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 thank you for the question. Uh, the original intention of the competition is to encourage low technology, uh, like uh, boundary. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> can I be heard now? Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, thank you for the question. And the original intention of the competition is to encourage the low technology like bundling or nothing by rope rather than uh, material, material structures. And we also encourage students to conduct building on their own. We also hope to focus on the performance of bamboo materials itself. So this is our condition about the craftsmanship or construction. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Zach. Wang want to say something uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wang Jiao Shou, you can speak. I want to say some words. The students have no 
a little knowledge about the technique, technology, about the bamboo technology. So uh, we want the students, all the project from the students use low tech. And uh, so, and it's easier to, uh, to build up uh, on the side. And the time for the build up is only three days or three or five half days. It's difficult to, to use high tech, it's impossible. So, uh, all the garden was designed uh, in a simple way. So it's easier to, for the students to build up. And uh, actually, we don't want to students to use very, very complicated structure. And uh, we want the students to use bamboo and know the characteristic of bamboo and uh, together use bamboo and flowers and put together to form a, a garden which has a, an atmosphere of poetry and uh, Chinese a characteristic. That is our goal for the garden festival. Yeah. So that is to say, it's easier for the students as a team to build up the, the, the structure of bamboo. This small pavilion, this small garden in uh, limited time. Okay. Okay. So uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Wang. We have one more question to you. Uh, uh, will the fifth garden making festival continue? Yes. Are we going to have a fifth garden making festival? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You, you, Thank you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so sorry. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. So we are going and to have. Yeah. 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 It's okay right now. Yeah, we are prepared. We, we have studied so, to prepare yeah. the, yes, the festival of next year because uh, COVID-19 is difficult for the uh, festival uh, to start in our to start in our in our, in our campus. So we want uh, next year the garden festival can also uh, help in uh, hold in 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 Chengdu. In Chengdu. And uh, uh, yeah, and also okay. welcome all the universities okay. Thank you. from uh, from the other world to participate the next year in Chengdu. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Wang. Yeah, I think there is one uh, question by Amy. Uh, I think she's talking about what certificates to Inba. Whether we are going to get a certificate of this. Um, uh, you know, uh, part uh, participation here. At the end of the seminar, will we have a certificate? And I wish if we in about, would like to prepare the field study to learn from developed ones, uh, I think so. I think we are getting certificates, I think all. Am I right, Zin? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I, I think participants need to take the quiz uh, to be able to receive okay. a certificate uh for for this uh uh for this because the certificate i think uh, uh i think uh, it is uh, for uh achievements the certificate is for achievements as uh, because uh, we need to know uh, what did you learn from from this uh, program uh this is on on our e-learning program yeah okay. and uh, we uh, registered participants of uh of like a uh, three sessions because we have five sessions uh, now if you have registered three sessions uh, you you could uh, receive a certificate of participation okay yes yeah thanks Jin. Uh, okay we have one uh, question from mr vidya sankar uh, this is uh, could you please mention the specific species of uh, uh, is Juska there? I think, I think it must be bamboo using for construction. Please share the mechanical and structural properties of the species. I think that's a little uh, wide question, but John, uh, would you like to yeah, respond was, to that? Um, the specific yeah, it was, species. It was Juskia scandens, um, and it was from a specific location just outside of Bogota. So um, any testing, I think, would have to be not based on any... Um, like the properties of single poles, but actually testing the sort of bundled element. Um, but yeah, it was um, just gear scandals. 
ஒரு <laughs> uh it's the uh, how about the uh, how have you handled the fire safety aspect in this project in your why uh, you know project what have you done for the fire safety well uh, the, this is a small residential building so we don't have very strict fire requirement however we have used uh like fire retard uh, panels uh to to cover the panels of the wall so the interiors of the house before uh the flooding and um we also have uh, extinguishers and um yeah so th- these are basically uh the, the main measures but again it's, it's quite a small building so it's 150 square meters in in total and it is one story so not not very strict requirement but again yeah we have fire retarders and extinguishers basically yeah. okay so i think yeah. Uh, in general also if we have processed bamboo products like a bamboo uh, panels and things because since they are factory produced materials uh, fire safety is generally taken care so i think there's not much of a issue but i think uh, from andrew and john i would like to know uh, how do they think about this fire safety in round bamboo projects when they do work with round bamboo andrew and john could you respond yeah in my uh, yeah <clears throat> i think it's it's quite difficult to to have uh, because the fire load of the bamboo is very very high it's very big uh, mass of uh, natural materials so it's quite difficult so basically how to protect the the structure from fire is by uh, a kind of social uh, social rules or or uh like for example in in green school it is not allowed all, all in, in ob it is not allowed to have an open fire inside the structure inside the not only the structure but inside the the compound inside the complex of bamboo structure so yeah i think so far and maybe putting a lot of sprinklers yeah mm-hmm. maybe john can you add yeah if i just um so like basically we just make the students aware of the um fire risks so yes like thinking about how the the design is going to be utilized how it's how it's going to function um yeah and like andre says to reduce the risk of um fire but then if the depending on where the project is you know having not having any exposed structural elements or putting this behind some sort of rendered or bahareke um wall so just making the students um think about like how to protect the the structure from from the fire and then depending on where the project is what what require what would be required in order to have that structure um that operational um and code compliant okay i actually i have been uh, doing uh, bamboo buildings you know from quite a number of bamboo buildings that have done in india water body around and because the bamboo that we use generally we have the moisture content something between 18 to 20% uh, and that's what we and then we seal that inside with the with the whatever coating that we do and if you have a water body around uh, you the moisture content uh, humidity in the atmosphere is generally maintained and that most of the time prevents bamboo to become completely dry because dry bamboo catches fire not the not otherwise so that is one method which i am using because i have been doing i mean uh, normal buildings like schools and things like that where children are there and people are there and this one method has um, sort of worked uh, in my situation i have not done much studies about that but that's something which uh, i have done and this is also uh, uh, true because uh, uh, if you see uh, i don't know around the world 
this only dry bamboo when you use it actually becomes inflammable because bamboo has got this uh, uh, you know um, on its outer surface the silica content and silica is actually a material used for uh, fire uh, uh, not extension also fire fire prevention it's more like a coating that is done and silica is one uh, you know material that is used for that purpose so when bamboo actually starts uh, uh, you know if, if at all it catches fire that prevents the fires to actually go inside so if you have your moisture content somehow maintained that really actually helps i mean that is something which um, it has helped so far we have not had that would any fire so far in our, any of our building and so that i just wanted to share that uh, there is another question by olga again uh, to marco Uh, which says uh, it sounds very really great idea to use straw, but how about rodents or other infestants? How can you protect it? Is what they have asked. Oh well, in in our case also the material is not exposed, so it's uh, completely enclosed. So this uh, um, basically a um, basis of uh, um, um, concrete and mortar at the basis and the foundation. And then on the top is covered again by is is completely enclosed as a membrane, um, synthetic membrane, which also protects from um, uh, condensation and then the um, radiant heating. So in, because heating is integrated in, in the in the floor as well, mm. um, and so it's completely sealed and uh, not accessible, hopefully to to road. I also actually we. Um, I think the, it, okay. together with um, the uh, with the materials also the, there was um, uh, I can't remember the name of the materials but these are uh, small is a sort of naphthalene so these small spheres that were also um, scattered in in the foundation to uh, protect also from uh, in not only rodents but other you know small parasites and um, pests in general. Thanks, thanks. Uh, we have one uh, question from Dulce. I mean, hi Dulce, I think that's really nice to have you here in the session. Uh, uh, she has a question for all the speakers. Uh, uh, this is about uh, how are these bamboo structures presented geared towards net zero? I think most of the presentations talked about it. I think maybe not in detail, but I talk about it in quite a lot of detail. I have a little bit of this thing about, you know, like when we are doing lots of buildings, it's only when you are doing it in a lab or doing it as a university project, you can do all these calculations and things like that. What do you do when you are actually doing in the field? Do we have any kind of a very simple about whether all these things are being, uh, you know, maintained? I mean, I'm just, uh, this was a question from Del. So uh, methodology for achieving non-residential zero energy buildings, uh, whether any one of these uh, structures which have been presented today, they were geared towards net zero. Marcos was definitely the uh, yeah yeah definitely this, this is one this is one of the of the focus of the design of um, and the competition. So the building will be uh, net zero. I think that the standard mentioned in the question is for um, non residential building, but the concept so our is residential, but the concept is similar. So yeah, we. Um, um, we aim to produce all the energy, so to, to lower, of course, the energy need of the building and then to produce all the energy we need by using the integrated uh, photovoltaics um, in the building. Uh, but also, I, I'd like to, to mention the fact that uh, these standards for zero energy buildings um, focus on the operational energy, so on, on the energy that is used yes. to operate the building in yes. uh, but yeah. I do not consider it again like the the um, whole life cycle, which is instead I think one of the uh, reasons why bamboo um, is a, a better choice from that point of view compared to um, almost any other possible structural material because of its low impact on the life cycle. I think you are very right. I think most of these. rating or things like that. Uh, for materials, uh, the number of points or whatever credits that they give is very, very less. Uh, I don't know why it is in the whole scenario of 100 points or whatever they have, the number of points given to that. So, uh, um, uh, and there's more, more, a uh, lot of things given to in a building, which is like the embodied energy, which we call in a building. 
So because once that is given, then probably bamboo and you know similar materials like mud and fiber and all probably will really contribute a lot towards the net zero calculation, which uh, unfortunately I think till now it is not there. Uh, maybe John and Andrew can uh, throw some light on that. I mean, this is this is definitely one of the. I mean, sim similar to fire. Um, this is this is another one of the big challenges of bamboo that we we there are the studies that show that bamboo is you know at least as sustainable as timber if it's from a managed forest. Um, studies that show that the optimal time to cut bamboo for to to lock in uh, to sequester CO two is at that three to five year point, which is the optimal time to use bamboo structurally as well. So you have that, you know, it's kind of the, that growth cycle to absorb CO2 aligns with when we need it to build. And then if we design permanent buildings, that's great because then you stick it in a building, that building lasts for hundred years, that carbon's locked away. Getting the then, getting the data and getting the certifications um, and, and the codes in order to, to have that regulated and, and sort of for a client to be able to say, look, this is my, you know, this is the embodied carbon in my building because I'm using round pole bamboo um, is, is still a challenge, I think. But it, we're moving in the right direction. We're finding more information all the time. And every time there's another project built, that's another case study that can be documented, referenced, and then, you know, it's so yeah. just building capacity, basically. But yeah, it's um, still a challenge. I think I would request Techri Inbar to you know have some uh, maybe uh, help uh, uh, the designers and people in that aspect. That the buildings that we are trying to do, if they can help us in trying to really, I think they're already doing it and actually documenting them in the manner that uh, Dals uh, spoke about and then presenting it to the world that how. Uh, building with bamboo actually is really, really making uh, a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm not just talking about few buildings. I mean, because um, Inbar is working in several countries and I'm very sure um, uh, we can collaborate with the governments of those countries and try to see that uh, we document buildings in a way that can be presented to the public and to the students and uh, more and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, professionals. And I think there's one thing which has uh, probably, uh, I don't know whether it found missing is the structural engineers because we architects have always found that one part, uh, you know, the structural engineers uh, to, uh, to say that, you know, we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, so that is something which is really a uh, little difficult. Uh, then they have, they're asking for techniques about uh, to use how to bend bamboo. Is that, uh, I think that, probably was a part of other session. Jin, should we, uh, I think it was already techniques and things have been discussed in other session, right? Uh, we have some uh, from uh, Jean, we had some questions for uh, quiz uh, for this session. Describe which features of the four construction festivals introduced by Professor Wang and Professor Zhao Jing has impressed you mo most. I think, okay, see that's the quiz. Uh, okay, this is the end of the thing, okay. Uh, I have some more questions. I will just, uh, okay. Ah, uh, there is one, uh, okay, Martin, thank you. I fully support the idea of putting bamboo into the university curriculum. Indeed, if possible, apply to high and high school curriculum as well to prepare our students well and early for advancement of the bamboo movement globally. Let us try to involve ourselves with uh, uh, UNESCO. I'm very happy, um, uh, thanks Martin, and I'm very happy to uh, inform the August gathering that uh, I have been running bamboo courses since 2011 through a university and through my organization Center for Green Building Materials and Technology uh, from Bangalore, India. It's a home-based program that we are running for at the PG level and modular course uh, level at about nine weeks program which we run through the Albag University Agra, uh, uh, which is for the people who are execution people uh, they can be even architects, but they are also for artisan level people who actually work on the ground, which is the workforce on the ground. So we have been running courses for uh, almost 10 years with the, the Dialbag University and CGBT, uh, uh, you know, hand to hand. And recently we have also signed an MOU with the Council of Architecture in India, 
to with the bamboo uh, to put bamboo in the curriculum in India, uh, in the architecture colleges and all that. And we are uh, hoping that in near future, we'll be able to do that. So I would be really uh, soliciting the help of INBAR uh, in trying to take this forward with all these things and all the speakers and all the you know people out there where we can uh, actually collaborate. So that is something which uh, we are doing and we will be happy, John, to have workshops. Um, we have conducted uh, approximately 70 workshops uh, since 2004, uh, hands-on workshops on bamboo. And we are doing set with several schools and we will be most happy to do with AA, uh, your visiting school, uh, another program. Uh, and uh, Marco, we also have this year with one solar, uh, solar uh, decathlon India, we are doing with Selco, one resilient housing with bamboo uh, this year with one of the, one of the uh, universities here. So uh, we are doing some works here, which I would really happy to uh, collaborate with all of you uh, to take this thing forward. And Inbar definitely has the has the uh, you know capacity to take it take in and involve all of us together and involve ourselves with UNESCO. And I would request Inbar to uh, really do that. I would like to now go through the four questions that um, uh, there are some small questions are there. Uh, uh, John, that means you are not using a single culm as a construction unit, a bundle of culms together. Uh, Mr. Vidya Sankar is asking, uh, John. I mean, there are lots yeah, of questions no. are there. Jin, do we have time to take it forward? Jin, do we have a time? I think I, I think we uh, we have very limited time. Shall we take the uh, last Hello? questions? Can you hear me? I think. Hello. Hello? Hello, Neelam, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so I think Neelam has a problem of hearing us. Yes, so I think uh, I think we we should uh, we should uh, uh, cl uh, close because it is time. Neelam, can you hear us, Neelam? I think she has a problem. Uh, she has a problem of uh, receiving sounds. So I, I, I just, uh, I just take uh, forward her request for Inbar to, uh, to do the uh, internationalization of <laughs> of the. Um, of the bamboo uh, education, uh, bamboo construction education mechanism, and so uh, this Hello. is just just what I have mentioned. Uh, I think uh, uh, at the beginning of this uh, uh, of this course, I said one of Inbar's key role is for uh, facilitating cooperation and exchanges, and uh, and uh, we would um, and I also mentioned that uh, this workshop. Uh, it's the second of its type, and uh, it has already played a role like a platform where uh, professionals share uh, information, uh, knowledge, and uh, uh, and exchange ideas, and uh, and even like advocating some initiatives. So last year we have advocated the initiative of uh, uh, creating a sustainable supply chain for the bamboo construction sector. And um, so, um, so that means uh, a lot uh, of uh, uh, professionals are, are working in different keys of the cluster, uh, uh, in different parts of the uh, bamboo construction cluster. And uh, at, as Bilam has mentioned, we need structural engineering as well. We need many engineers, we need many architects, and we need designers. Yeah. We, need, uh, we need executives uh, like a, like a Nilam has mentioned, from mass to executives, uh, so um, so these uh, should all be professional. Uh, uh, so that's uh, that's what we are trending. And uh, uh, let me uh, let me uh, give several uh, keywords of uh, of today uh, regarding to the mechanism. Uh, I think from the three, uh, from the uh, from the uh, four presentations, uh, I think from uh, Professor Wang and from Professor Zhao, uh, we could learn that um, providing a wide-based 
um, a wide-based uh, educational uh, event is very important and trending bamboo into different champions and multi-participation and win-win situation. Uh, I think these are keywords for, uh, for uh, Professor Wang and uh, Professor Zhang's presentation. And for Andre and John, I think the keywords um, is an all around commitment and scrutinizing from the, um, uh, from the professional uh, architects and engineers. Uh, so I think it is a professional touch of bamboo is very important. Um, uh, as uh, uh, Niran has mentioned that we need to, uh, we need to do the math. Yeah, and, uh, and we need to cr uh, collect the data and we need to create a curriculum. And uh, from Marco, uh, I think uh, he gives us uh, the, he shows us the, uh, the way forward and uh, that we should delegate uh, bamboo into our future attempts and into various future attempts and uh, um, mix it, integrate it. And, uh, and we should play its specialties, uh, bamboo specialties. I think, uh, I think also um, at last, uh, many participants also realized the role of Imba here. Uh, let me put Imba's keywords here, which is internationalization. Uh, I think it, it, it was given uh, about, uh, uh, I think uh, seven or eight years ago by, uh, by Mr. Martin Tam uh, in one of our construction seminars. And uh, still, I think internationalization is in uh, special roles uh, in the world to, uh, to, to provide uh, the, our professionals uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of supports. I mean, it is a, it's, it's a kind of support and it's also in mission uh, to, uh, to make <clears throat> Only in this way, I think we we could make bamboo to play its real roles uh, in in like um, <clears throat> how to say addressing <clears throat> addressing some of the uh, some of the key issues uh, like hot issues uh, in the construction world uh, like uh, like uh, what we have mentioned energy energy net energy and uh, and. Um, uh, green circular economy and uh, and sustainability. So uh, to 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 tackle these issues, uh, I think we need uh, all types of uh, professionals to be committed. And uh, so I, I think uh, there's a uh, to be committed and um, to ex uh, to to executive to execute uh, execute and. Uh, and especially for, uh, and uh, I think uh, there's another keyword is called in integration. Uh, that means uh, uh, bamboo should be integrated with uh, uh, different systems and uh, different materials and uh, uh, with different uh, uh, contacts and, uh, uh, and themes. So uh, I, I just uh, take this opportunity uh, to thanks our uh, panelists today again uh, for giving us uh, the, uh, the very good uh, inspirations. And uh, I think through your presentations, we see the path uh, towards uh, uh, a sustainable mechanism for capacity building uh, for our uh, future bamboo uh, professionals, bamboo construction professionals. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so before we uh, before we close, uh, can we have a group photo? Uh, I think some of the participants have may have to leave, but uh, uh, there's uh, still many of them in. Uh, can you now turn on your your video? So we wait, we wait for a while uh, because there's a delay 
of receiving the uh, signals, visual signals. Uh, so we'll wait for a while. So again, uh, Yu Chen, can you help me taking the photos? Here. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Okay, next. One, two, three. Okay, don't move. Uh, one, two, three. So page four. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, Yu Chen, you uh, you ma? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, uh, I think we had our uh, group photo. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a very nice session. Uh, I, I think I forgot to introduce our next uh, session, uh, session five uh, next uh, uh, on 29th November, 2021. It's about standardization of round count bamboo structure. We just discussed about the utilization of round count bamboo structure, which I think John think it's very important and it's agreed by the other uh, panelists. And standardization is a key part of making the bamboo construction cluster uh, valid. Um, so therefore, um, uh, we, we are going to talk about the newly issued ISO 22156 2021, bamboo structure, bamboo combs, and structural design. So join our panelists for the, at, in the last session about bamboo standardization, rod comb standardization. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nilam, uh, we, we couldn't you. hear you. Yes, we couldn't hear you just Thank now. You. Yes. <laughs> oh, now we can Thank hear you well. You. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank Bye -bye. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you Dulce. Thank you again. Thank you, Thank you, Thank Thank you Milam. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Thank you so much.